Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about the law of conservation of energy and we're going to use the FET energy skate park to help us understand this law. So the law of conservation of energy says that energy can be converted into different forms but not destroyed. Another way to say this is energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. We're going to be seeing this law demonstrated through an animation. So in this video, we're gonna focus on three forms of energy, potential, kinetic, and thermal. There are other forms of energy, but we're not gonna be mentioning them in this video. The same principles though of that energy can't be created or destroyed, only transferred, will apply to all the energy vocabulary that you will learn. So here we are on the FET animation and we're going to go ahead and put our skater on the ramp. Now, first thing I want you to notice is the relationship between kinetic and potential. See how as one goes up, the other goes down and they just keep alternating. Okay, that's because potential energy has to do with height. So when the skater is high up off the ground, they have a lot of potential energy, whereas kinetic energy has to do with motion. And so they're not moving much, they're very slow. And there's almost a moment where you pause at the top of a skate ramp, and so there's no motion. And so right now, um, there's, there's no kinetic energy because there's no motion. All of the skater's energy is potential. First of all, this is not reality, right? There's no friction. In real life, you wouldn't just be able to go back and forth to the same height every time. We'll look at that in a moment. But the other thing I want you to notice is that anytime I pause the skater's motion, and I were to take this green kinetic bar and set it on top of the potential bar, you would see that the two bars add up to the total energy. And that is because energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. So what we're doing is we're transferring the energy from potential to kinetic, to potential, to kinetic, back and forth. We're converting it but we're not destroying it. And that's why the total energy stays the same. So if I pause here at the bottom, the skater's not above the ground. So there's very little potential energy. Almost all the energy is in motion. And that's also the fastest part of the ramp, right? And if I pause part way through, now we see there's some energy due to motion and some energy due to position. But if we were, to, again, to stack those two on top of each other, it would equal the total energy of the skater. So if I start over, you see that the total starting energy really has to do with how high the skater is off the ground, okay? But as long as I start her at six meters above the ground, the total energy is going to stay the same in the system because energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred. Okay, so let's now look at reality. In reality, there is friction, okay? If we, had, if we put friction at none, you'll see it looks just like we saw a moment ago. But I can now make this more like reality and put friction in. Hmm, what do you see changing? now that there's friction. Look, there's a new bar, thermal. What does that have to do with friction? Well, as there is more rubbing of the wheels on the ramp, some of the energy is going to transfer into heat. We call that thermal energy. And in the end, the skater stops moving because all the energy has transferred into thermal energy. The wheels will be hot. The ramp itself might be a little bit warmer. All right, so let's watch now. Now that we have friction on, 
do we still uphold the law of conservation of energy? I'm going to pause. Okay. So kinetic and potential, still we're going back and forth like before. But now over time, we're going to see this thermal energy bar grow in height. Let's look as they roll more. So now that the skater has traveled along the ramp more, we have a higher amount of thermal energy, but whatever's not thermal is gonna keep alternating between kinetic and potential. But if at any point I pause my skater, these three bars would add up to the, the total energy. So if I could put this green bar on top of the blue bar and then the red bar on top, they would all equal the height of the total energy. Why? Because energy cannot be created or destroyed. So we can't have energy just like whoop, go, disappear. We got to represent it all. It's just now split into three things. Okay. But it's got to always add up to the total energy. So you see the kinetic and potential going back and forth and that thermal energy bar getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger until uh, all the energy has been transferred into thermal energy. This video, this animation, does a really good job of showing us that energy can't be destroyed. We're just transferring it into a different form. And um, like real life, a lot of energy is transferred unintentionally due to friction. So what are our key takeaways here? So we saw that the total amount of energy always stays the same, okay? So if we could pause it at any time, if we looked at the equation, potential plus kinetic is gonna equal the total, okay? And we call that, there's a vocabulary word for that called mechanical energy. Once we turned on friction, we got a third bar. So now we've got to add potential plus kinetic plus thermal. And then those three things together are going to always equal the total energy. So always throughout the whole thing, energy is not lost. It's just being transferred into a different format. Here's a challenge for you. Does bouncing a ball violate the conservation of energy law? Okay. Okay. Here I go. I'm going to drop a ball and we'll see if we can prove the law of conservation of energy applies. Oh no! The ball's not bouncing to the same height. Does that mean we just destroyed energy? Is it gone? Did we just break the law of conservation of energy? If you could, if you could design a ball that was able to bounce it back up to its original starting height without you putting extra force in it. You just drop it and you could get it to bounce back up to its original starting point. I guarantee you'd be a millionaire because um, we keep always having energy transferred into unintentional energy forms. And it's a major problem. And if you could figure out how to not have any energy transferred into sound or to thermal energy when you bounce a ball, you would be so rich. So hopefully that inspires some of you to go into careers in physics. Please give a thumbs up if this video helped you to understand the law of conservation of energy. And like always, the best compliment you can give me is to push subscribe. Bye-bye.